Okay, so I have 50 on the spring using the clamp from the ticker tape timer. Take the meter stick there so that the end of the spring is right on 20. That's going to be your zero mark. Remember, you're going to have to take 20 away from all your readings. Okay. Putting the 50 on there seems to stretch the spring out enough. Now, from now on, ignore the 50 for the first part of the lab. When you find K, you got to ignore the 50 is in there. That's your zero mark right at the 20. Now start adding 100 on at a time. Forgetting the 50 is there because 50 is it when you're zeroed. And then notice the change in length from the bottom of the spring. It used to be 20. Now what is it? Now add another 100. Take the 100 up, put 200 on. Okay, now 200 extra on there. Look at the bottom of the spring. Take that reading. Keep repeating this by adding 100 over and over and over again until you get at least 6 to 8 data points. Hopefully you can get up to 1 kilogram, that would be really great, then you can have 10 data points. I know the lab only has 6 spaces, but see if you can make some more. Now, like the lab said, graph the elongation on the y-axis and the weights that you were hanging there, the force, on the x-axis. The slope of that line should be 1 over k, the spring constant. That's how stiff the spring is. So find k. We're going to need that for our real lab. The first part is just to find k so we can use that in our lab. All right, now take all the masses off and note where the spring is. Note where the spring is. That's your reference point. Still around 20 with nothing on it. Now I want you to put a certain amount on, let's say 500. All right, so now we got the spring constant from the graph of the force hanging and how much it stretched. So whatever reference point you used, I used 20. When I took all the masses off, it was 20. Right there at 20. So now stick a one kilogram mass on there, let it hang down, and then just lift it up and watch your reference point right there. I'm lifting it up to about 25 and then just drop it. So what kind of energy did it have way up there? Potential energy, gravity potential energy. What kind of energy did it turn into? Kinetic. But when it went all the way down to the bottom, didn't it all turn into spring potential? So this lab's pretty simple. All we got to do is see is the potential energy gravitationally that we lose by falling equal to the spring potential that we gather, we get. We get spring potential when it's on the bottom. We had gravity potential at the top. So all you have to do is observe and write down the number at the top and the number at the bottom. The number at the top minus the number on the bottom is the height change. The number at the top from 20, the bottom number from 20, is x1 and x2, or y1 and y2 if you want to use that. So by using that, you can find out the 1 half k x2 squared minus 1 half k x1 squared to find the change in spring potential energy. If you do mg, m times g, so this thing, m times g times uh, h, the change in the, in the displacement, you're going to get the loss in gravitational potential energy. See if they're equal because that's the point of the lab. It should be equal because of conservation of potential energy. All right, have some fun. Just hand in that one lab sheet, answer the questions on the back, and just the graph, and that's all you have to do. Have a good one.